Thanks for joining us once again. Today we focus on the fact that cattle has now ceased operations for 30 days because of oversupply of lithium battery products. It's my belief that this portends a $350 stock price for Tesla because of the declining cost of lithium. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the show would like some better ideas on investing and trading, please join us on Patreon. So our talk today focuses on the fact that there was supposed to be a certain trajectory of things, which is Tesla introduced the electric vehicles, the electric vehicles were doing well, and then there would be a process where a lot of other manufacturers, as Bob Lutz uh, described, would enter the marketplace, uh, start using the same battery supply facilities, BYD, cattle, um, and one of the Korean manufacturers, and in essence, create a competitive situation for Tesla and sort of blunt Tesla's ability to survive and just take market share from them. The reality of what happened is that the consumers have not been supportive of the offer being made by many of the large corporations around the world. One example is that we often talk about is the Ford Model E has a habit of uh, they have a one-year supply of vehicles because consumers don't want them, basically. We also have another look in the case of Mercedes in Europe and the United States. They've, they had a special line called EQC that they developed that would house their electric vehicles. And uh, things went so badly there that they've reorganized to de-emphasize this EQ. Uh, this new brand and simply make it a part of their regular operations. We also have, for example, GM has stopped building out their lithium ion sort of co-factory uh, that they were doing in Ohio. And we also have Ford um, had their sort of cattle uh, co-branded facility for batteries uh, in Arkansas, I believe, or Alabama, I believe, that, that's been uh, canceled partially because they couldn't work out the whole tariff process that the U.S. government would be putting in place. So what we ended up with then is there's a lot of unsold uh, domestic brands and international brands and consumers instead are just buying Teslas. So as a result, we've seen a six to 10% increase and Elon is saying we'll, we'll see another 20% increase in demand for Teslas going into the new year. The higher side of that is may or may not occur, but it slightly doesn't matter. And so where we are now is, as you've seen and we've covered show for this, we've gone through a process where there's been, there was, as of three months ago, s above a 75% decline in the price in the open marketplace for buying lithium ion batteries. And so now we're in this position where um, instead of prices as Elon had predicted for the lithium ion being high and getting higher as it had been for multiple years, with many competitors vying for the supply of both lithium, finished batteries, everything was very tight supply. It's now become abundant supply. And there's this sort of weird hookup going on right now where, for example, there's a company called Albemarle. Albemarle is a lithium supplier to Tesla, one of the largest uh, sort of companies in the world in that space. The problem that's popped up is that Albemarle, in combination with Tesla, is opening up a new lithium facility 
in China. And the problem with lithium sort of mining is it takes about three years from the start of a mine to it's actually producing usable product. So right now, Tesla, their goal was to have a portion, perhaps 50% of in-house production for the lithium that they needed and the remainder would come from buying in the open marketplace or long-term contracts with places like Cattle and BYD. So now we're in an interesting position because with Cattle having shut down, the problem that they're having is that prices have fallen to the point where the mar open marketplace for lithium is actually below the cost of many producers. And the only entities that are doing great right now Tesla and BYD, for example, have vertical integration all the way back to the mines. So they're able to deliver <clears throat> very low cost lithium to their facilities. And they can bring that low cost through the entire supply chain in the process. So the answer that comes up then is that this is a complete disaster for you know, obviously the, the miners, producers of batteries that are not vertically integrated. It's also a disaster for all sort of the competitors to Tesla. I've spent months trying to figure out, well, what happened? Why are people not buying uh, the, uh, the vehicles offered by the major brands because they've been buying cars from them for years, so they should have a competitive advantage from Tesla once they have a product in the marketplace. I believe it is an idea that I'll call maybe death by a thousand cuts. As you may recall, Cadillac is the main entity that's advertising relative to electric vehicles right now, particularly on my channel. I've seen that happening a lot. But what really surprises me about this whole thing is that we have this advertising going on, but Cadillac is still having difficulty relative to the fact that they had shut down their chip buying uh, for their EV vehicles and their people getting cars, they're still not complete with their uh, uh, navigation systems because of the, the lack of, uh, of chips. So when you add the lack of chips to a very inefficient charging network, um, I I don't know if you've seen this, but we haven't chosen to do a long show on it. But the theory had been that the charging facilities would be no problem. There are three or four major uh, charging charge point and others available. But for a number of reasons, the uptime for those charging facilities is somewhere around 65%. Tesla's above 95%. So this mess was supposed to be solved by the fact that you would have uh, all the major brands be able to charge at Tesla facilities, which are, have better uptime. But what it lined up to is that when you spend above 50 grand, especially towards $100,000 for a vehicle, what you're actually paying for is efficiency. So the less efficient your solution is at a higher price, the customers aren't just saying, hey, not a big deal. I'll use uh, facilities set up via Tesla or whoever for those high-end vehicles. And the answer is the customers are saying, this is the second largest purchase to a house. So if I'm spending that much money, I want the best solution and I don't want a solution that's sort of bolted together that may or may not work. And so as a result, we've seen amazing statistics. The biggest one I think is amazing is the Hummer, which is being advertised heavily on sports channels these days I've seen. Um, they sold one electric Hummer in the first year. Uh, I just thought that was a huge embarrassment and it really showed what consumers thought in general of the EV solutions being offered by GM. They actually have some really nice vehicles. I just saw a show that talked about the uh, Silverado pickup trucks and the fact that 
their their performance aspects of that truck they're actually better uh, than the uh, cyber trucks from Tesla but the problem that seems to have happened is consumers have confidence in Tesla being able to deliver a product back it up etc and they don't have a similar confidence in other brands to be there short and long term because there are a lot of little details like does your dealer carry parts for it? Are they backing the vehicle heavily? Are they doing a token backing uh, of that vehicle? So the answer that's come out is that even if there was a vehicle available and it, it's from one of the big brands we already know, uh, consumers are saying we're not interested. And this is creating an incredible disaster because not only are they not selling EVs that they need to sell in order to be competitive, they're also stuck with uh, unsold inventory. And because they're not selling those vehicles, they actually have to pay fines and fees to Tesla. So the whole thing has turned into a mess that didn't at all fit where I thought things would go and where I think they thought things would go. And Tesla's thriving in the process. So the final part of the show, I wanted to review why it is that I believe Tesla goes to over 300 heading for 350 here. And that is something called cost of goods sold. So in a lot of Elon's businesses, one of his concentration has been um, what are the costs related to this entity? And how do we, in essence, beat the costs of others to deliver services? SpaceX comes to mind in terms of reusable rockets. Prior to SpaceX, you would just use a rocket one time, uh, dispose of it, and then do another. By Tesla introduced, or Elon Musk through SpaceX introducing reusable rockets, those rockets are being used four times. Therefore, your unit cost drops. Therefore, they can deliver on missions to NASA and others where they're the lowest cost producer. And the Russians who had taken over delivery of sort of U.S. satellites um, even had some, you know, expletives to go with the fact that they couldn't meet those cost parameters given that they couldn't do the technological moves that Elon was doing at SpaceX. I digress. The thing that's happening now that I'm surprised by, amazed by, is that starting when Tesla stock price was about $180 a share before it made this run back up, the earnings came out. And what they saw in the earnings was that the margins for Tesla were actually rising. So what tends to happen is the analysts tend to look at your margins. Are they rising or are they falling? And, that, and then they extrapolate what's going to happen going forward. And that influences the stock price. Now the question is, why is that? Well, there's a, compo there's a process that goes on. If you multiply... Um, the margin times the growth rate. Um, it, it tells you basically, um, so your earnings number is a multiple, uh, or your stock price is a multiple of the earnings, so growth rate times the amount you earn. And so we're in an interesting situation right now because with lithium prices, let's say they're down 80% in the last year. What this means then is that Tesla's profit margins continue to rise. And particularly as Tesla has its own mind to consume half, maybe three quarters of its lithium needs all the way back to uh, the mine, those costs continue to fall. So we have a situation going where the company may not be blowing out the lights in terms of 100% growth, but the market is laser focused on their profit margins and therefore they're enjoying a nice rise in the stock price because of it. What will we see going forward? Well, oil prices are down. Half of the components of what Tesla does in terms of things like paint, things like uh, the process of creation of the aluminum that they use, all of those have an oil component to the base of it. And as oil prices fall, there's another example of costs are falling, which increases the profit margins for Tesla. So do not be surprised if we see Tesla stock price continue to rise nicely 
along with the number of vehicles sold because in essence competitors are pulling out of the marketplace and then add to it um, Elon continuing to hammer away at their cost of goods sold for lower numbers. So I think this is exciting news. We look forward to your comments on this and look forward to sharing our health tips for the day. Just a reminder, consider switching to olive oil primarily. I've just learned about, you know, there's only three ingredients in an olive oil based um, uh, vinaigrette, uh, lemon juice, salt, pepper, and um, uh, and olive oil. Uh, a cup of olive oil with those other two components, obviously in smaller quantities, and you now have a homemade, healthy uh, uh, salad dressing that uh, will serve you in many different ways. Just a reminder, no more than once a week for fried foods. I also want to encourage you to consider 25 leg lifts a day, limiting the amount of um, damage to your knees, which requires uh, surgery. Also wanted to encourage you to consider um, what I want to say. If you put your hands behind your head and you simply run, if you're laying on your back, have your, just do 20 of those with your knees uh, running. It allows your uh, core muscles to tighten up and it'll help in terms of back pain. Uh, we also will inter keep introducing sort of brief snippets from some of the uh, health tips that have come up from YouTube that I think are pretty impressive and look forward to your feedback on all that as well. Once again, thanks for joining us. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Juice over the heat road. Hoda hafez. Daj jini hama. Gombawa. In Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good. Namaste. Arrivederci.